Hi everyone, I'm Lucas Safardi, and like the rest of the speakers today, I've been invited to share an idea. And when I was approached, I thought to myself, I don't have a terribly exciting new idea to share, or even a controversial idea at least, although for some people, every time I open my mouth, something controversial comes out. <laughs> because I'm par apparently, I'm too frank, and I have a proper issue with wording things nicely. Um, so throughout all of my life, I have only spoken about things that interest me. Or better, I have only spoken about myself. <laughs> so today, <laughs> in the hope that I would inspire other people as well as myself, I decided to do just that. Now, I originally wanted to start off with Dante, but I think that this is a bit too highbrow for my talk. So I'm changing it with something much more relatable, and that is Marnie from Girls. <laughs> um, it's practically the same thing. And what this introduces is what my talk is going to be about, and that's sources. What I want to push forward is the idea that what inspires me and what fascinates me is also what instills in me the idea that I'm not good enough. And here I'm using myself as microcosmic for everyone in the room. This would mean that we need to come to terms with the fact that what influences us in our everyday life, or in our work and art, or both, if we were to take life as some sort of performative, transient expression, is also what cripples us, or our artistic processes. Therefore, being familiar with what we like benefits us. It benefits us because, upon being introspective, we start approaching the world around us as something that is also composed of elements that, although distant, are also very personal to us. And this makes everything much more approachable, and in a way, more authentic. But what it also does is perhaps raise the bar a bit too much. And it instills in us this nagging obsession that perhaps we are not living the life we should be living, or we're not as good as we should be, or for people who have a higher self-esteem, the idea of the real possibility of being good enough, but in the wrong context, or without the proper resources. Which feels a lot like something scratching inside of us, needing to get out in a way. But this obsession, or obsessing over interests, almost making them your own, does have its perks. For example, as a designer, everything <laughs> that I ever wanted to make and everything that I ever wanted to say with my work, um, John Galliano has probably said or made already before me with so much poise and probably wearing an amazing outfit. But, not but, it's an and actually, when experienced virtually, this actually makes everything, wor everything worse because as the it becomes as depressive as it is accessible. So how does this contribute to the eventuality of feeling better, or producing work that you're somewhat satisfied with? So up until a couple of years ago, I used to approach my work as an introvert. And in a sense, maybe not to feel the frustration I just spoke about, I used to block out external influences. I, in a way, worked with my antennae turned off. I would wake up one day and be like, oh, I have this idea for this gown, and it's going to look really cool when I film it in this way and then edit it in this way, and so on, never trying to apply my work to a new context based on what it is that I liked in order to push it forward and push it to new levels of quality and relevance. And all of this stemmed from the fact that I maybe wasn't passionate about what I liked. I was passionate, but I wasn't really directing that passion towards anything, and this was making me feel extremely frustrated. It was only a bit like I wanted to know only as much as I needed to know for that particular project to be finished or that particular gown, nothing more. Then it got to a point where I was creating work which was visually interesting and somewhat intriguing, but very linear and boring on all other levels no matter how deeply researched it was or how much of a conceptual statement it made, it was never close to home enough. All of the imagery was becoming incredibly cheesy. 
I didn't really have anything to say that was special enough or close enough to that of my sources and that of my inspirations, obviously. Then last year, I found myself working on a very personal project. And this is when I started seeing my work as a sort of catharsis. It started off with me not being able to produce anything because I was on such a low. And every time I tried to pick up something to start working, I kept on going back to thinking about how there was nothing really out of the ordinary for me to say or explore, apart from my own personal experiences. And perhaps that's when I realized that with personal experiences and with inspiration, it's not always artifactual. It's not always about McQueen's hologram of Kate Moss or art history or new technologies and so on. It's also about our life experiences. And as insignificant as those experiences are and our feelings, I think they're great. And I don't think they're a bypass for sadness and frustration because self-examination opens new doors. And apart from those new doors, it also opens new routes where processes are almost re-evaluated. And these processes are unhindered by any nagging thoughts. So one day, I woke up and embroidered this jacket with everything that I ever wanted to say to the very few people who were lucky enough to break my heart. And as vulgar and ridiculous as that may sound, it felt great. Like they collected me, I collected them and documented them as sort of natural history objects. It was exhibited in Valletta for a month, and in a way, I offered it along with my frustrations and anxiety and issues with sources and inspirations to a city of people. And now it's sitting in my friend's garage because I don't want to look at it, but that's beyond the point. <laughs> now that I look back, the contributing factors that made this late work so different to that perceiving it was exactly that I started to equate the personal with the political. And I know that this is such a dated concept, but it's not so dated if you look at it the other way around, and that is if you make everything that belongs to the outside world personal. And things start to make more sense in this way when you direct this frustration of thinking your work isn't good enough towards the work itself, pushing it, editing it, filtering it, not being afraid to put it next to the sources which you respect most. In a way, I'm saying everyone needs to make their work feel or look reverential. And I think that all relevant art in 2016 has to be confessional. And in a way, about the processes of the frustrations of its own creation. I feel like everything has already been done and overdone, and the only new, unique things that artists or designers can bring to the table are their own personal experiences in their purest form possible. As they are, affected and intruded into by our sources, inspirations, no matter how depressive they can be, no matter how much frustration they cause. Because everything is semi-fictitious, and we just need to acknowledge that to come to terms with the fact that our ideas are only partially ours. And at the end, feelings and this hybridity of sources and ideas, and more importantly, the feelings and attitudes towards these sources, is unique. And that is what matters most. And every experience is still a new one, because we see things how we see them and experience in them. And as Hannah from HBO's Girls so brilliantly put it, I am an individual, and I feel how I feel when I feel it. Thank you.